Four inmates all knew each other from the previous incarcerations in Florida and Georgia. When they were assigned to Jason Cells in December of 1961, they began formulating Idiots. an escape plan under the leadership of Frank Morris. They would have had to know that all these guys served in the same prison together previously. And every single one of them are charged with escaping. Right. And clearly the two brothers, and they're just like, hey, you guys get all these four right here. Right. All next to each other. Jeez. Feel free to communicate however you want. Jeez. <laughs> Over the next six months, they widened the ventilation ducts beneath their sinks using discarded saw blades found on the prison grounds, which don't make no damn sense. We're talking about one of the, the toughest prisons in America. And there's saw blades laying on the ground they're, outside. They're just like, <laughs> you're like, what the hell is that? You guys dunk those saw blades out there this morning? Fresh. They don't want them to be rusted. They got to be fresh ones every day. They got like a pile of saw blades just <laughs> in the corner of the yard. <laughs> it's like when the bricks showed up at the rioters. All right. How's these get here? I don't know. Let's use them. Let's use them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they use the blades they found on the prison grounds. Metal spoons from the mess hall and electric drill improvised from the motor of a vacuum cleaner. So to be quiet. I don't know. Have you ever heard of vacuum cleaner? Well, the vacuum, that's a sucking sound. The motor is actually quiet. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You ever turn the vacuum cleaner on and not just leave it sit there? It's not sucking. No, it is. It's oh, always still, still going. Still sucking. That's what that is. That'd be loud. Of course it's going to be loud. You're in a damn prison. Everybody's going to hear it. And we're like, what the hell are they doing? They're trying to get the hell out of here. Nah, I don't know about that. I think it was like a little quiet. It just spun. How can nobody hear metal versus concrete? just going. Well, That'll be louder than the motor itself. Or tink, tink, tink for hours. Like, what is that? What is that sound? It stops every time I walk by itself. <laughs> Weird. It's like a loose something. Crazy man, keeps me up all night. Oh, I can't believe it. Did you hear that? You guys got to do something about this. <laughs> right. Can't even get a good night's sleep in this damn place. So, anyhow, yeah, they're digging holes, taking souls. The men conceal their work with painted cardboard and mask the noise. Oh, what? Yeah, they made like little vents or they put, the, actually, they put the vents around and they plastered around or some, something like that. I get it. Uh, and they mask the noise with Morris's accordion. Uh, <laughs> right. A music hour, so he did it for an hour a day. One hour per day. Yeah, that's all mm. you can do. I, I mean, mean, you sure. got nothing else to do, right? Sure. Look at there's a picture of the cardboard in the grate around it to get them a hole big enough to get out of there. Nice. Did they put that back on after they left? No. Yeah, because you would see that when you're walking through. That's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, once the holes were wide enough to pass through, the men ex accessed the unguarded utility corridor directly behind their cell's tier and climbed to the vacant top level of the cell block where they set up a clandestine workshop. Here, using over 50 raincoats, among other stolen and donated materials. Nice. Like, hey, they're out standing in the mess hall. <laughs> Taking donations. Taking donations for the great escape. <laughs> Uh, even, even the guards are. Yeah, I was say, even, <laughs> even the guards are like giving them shit. They I'll probably see this one. They, they probably had a pool on it if they were actually gonna make it or escape or anything. Like I bet you fifty bucks they don't do it. <laughs> I got that. Double it. Uh, they also, yeah, with the donated materials, they constructed life preservers based on a design one of them found in Popular Mechanics. Mm -hmm. Not sure why uh, Popular Mechanics would be doing fifty raincoats and right. a raft. Well, so I doubt there are raincoats as far as something else. And the guy was like, oh, I can use raincoats. Right, that's true. They also assembled a six by 14 foot rubber raft. The seams carefully stitched by hands and sealed with heat from nearby steam pipes. That's where uh, Morris's IQ comes in. He's like, see that steam over there? Paddles were improvised from scrap wood and screws. Don't know how they got either of those. Right. Um, finally, they climbed a ventilation shaft to the roof and removed the rivets. Yeah, oh. They had wood shop and all that. Remove the rivets holding a large fan in place. How do they move riv uh, remove rivet? Yeah, no, no, that's a little rough there. Rivet, you got to grind off. Or at least bang the shit out of them until they pop out. <sighs> well, they could. They're like damn old pipes. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> like, uh, Warden, we should probably get that checked out. Right, nah, we're good, but yeah. <laughs> We already uh, use up our government right. funds. We don't, got the, we don't got the, you want overtime or what? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> The men conceal their absence while working outside their cells. And after the escape itself by sculpting dummy heads from a homemade paper mache like mixture of soap, toothpaste, concrete dust, and toilet paper, and giving them a realistic appearance with paint from the maintenance shop and hair from the barbershop floor. 
with towels and clothing piled under under the blankets in their bunks and the dummy heads positioned on the pillow that appeared to be sleeping. No, 99. Even though one of the dummies' heads, uh, the eyes are open on it. I know, right? <laughs> like, why wouldn't they just close them? All of them. Uh, the night of June 11, 1962, with all preparations in place, the men initiated their plan. Uh, West discovered that the cement he had used reinforced crumbling, crumbling concrete around his vent and hardened, narrowing in the opening and fixing the grill in place. He, mm. he did too good of a job. Poor guy. <laughs> well, by the time he managed to remove the grill and rewiden the hole, the others had left without him. He said, I'm going back to sleep. <laughs> well, he's like, well, all right. All ready to go. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah today's the big day. <laughs> it's a big day. Like, Man, they won't leave me. Hmm. <laughs> Digging out and then goes all the way over there. Like, damn, they left. They left. What am I to do now? From this, right? How did he dig out without anybody hearing him again? You know, he was frantic. In the middle of the night. You know, he was frantically doing it. Right. Get the fuck out of here. Hmm. Right. From the service corridor, Morris. That that makes me think that guy was lying. He probably never even tried to do it. it, it Just like, freak this, I'm staying here. Right. He never even, uh, yeah, he never even dug a hole in the first place. Because they did find a hole in his cell. He has sec- second thoughts when it actually comes down to doing it. He's just like, ooh, it's sounding good. Yeah, I'm like, I don't know about that. And all the work that I did to do this, it gave me something to do for a couple of weeks. <laughs> so I'm good. I'm sure they probably, right. I'm sure they probably heard about all the other escaped attempts right. that failed or somebody got shot or something. When it comes down to it, you, find you got cold feet. Mm-hmm. It's so better than having a cold body. Right. From the service corridor, Morris and the Englands climbed the ventilation shaft to the roof. Guards heard a loud crash as they broke out of the shaft, but nothing further was heard. And the source of the noise was not investigated. It's like a video game when you make a noise and the guard's like, hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Goes over there. Looks around. He's like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Walks back. <Yeah. laughs> I'm good now. Hauling their gear with them, they descended 50 feet to the ground by sliding down a kitchen vent pipe. Then climbed two 12-foot barbed wire perimeter fences. Mm-hmm. Dang. Two of them. All of this without no guard seeing them, which I'm weird. At the northeast shoreline near the power plant, a blind spot in the prison's network of searchlights, searchlights and gun towers, they inflated their raft with a concertina stole from another inmate and modified to serve as bellows. Right. What did we say a concertina was? It's a uh, accordion, right? Oh, yeah, right. Accordion. So uh, it's like a... Right. <laughs> <laughs> At some time after 10, investigators estimated they boarded the raft, launched it, and departed toward their objective, Angel Island, just two miles to the north. Shouldn't have even taken that long, dude. I think they should have done three separate rafts. It would have worked. I could have. But two miles to the north is not even long. Right. It's not. You could swim that. Right. Nah, that was a little very choppy waters that night. Yeah. The escape was not discovered until the morning of June 12th due to the successful dummy head that the guards were like, oh, man, these guys are just sleeping for a while. Just a little sleepy like, heads. Like, get up, Frank. A little sleepy heads, literally. <laughs> oh, no, we, we got sleepy heads. <laughs> multiple, <laughs> multiple military. <laughs> the warden's like, not sleepy not heads. sleepy heads. <laughs> Which is the panic button. Right. Multiple military and law enforcement agencies conducted an extensive air, sea, and land search over the next 10 days. 14th to June, a Coast Guard cutter picked up a paddle floating about 200 yards off the southern shore of Angel Island. On that very same day, in the same general location, workers on another boat found a wallet wrapped in plastic, complete with names, addresses, photos of the Anglins, friends, and relatives. So, they know it's uh, Clarence or... uh, What's the other guy's name? John. John. John Boyce. They got John Boyce's wallet. Yeah, but I mean, they could have flipped over or something and fell out. Easily. Doesn't mean that they're dead. Or they said, throw your wallets. Or that, to, <laughs> yeah, to break them off the trail, right? Right. And through a paddle. And through a paddle. On June 21st, shreds of raincoat material believed to be the remnants of the raft were found on a beach not far from the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, the following day, a prison boat picked up a deflated life jacket made from the same material 50 yards off of Alcatraz. Mm. According to the final FBI report, no other physical evidence was found, which, like I said, they could have just thrown all that shit in the water and right. to make them seem like they'd flip. That's what I would do, right? Or capsize or what, drowned. What good is a wallet to a guy that it's what, that should be dead, right? Right. I think he knows his family's information and right. all that shit. So, And what good is the raft? Right. You can do with that, drag it around everywhere. Right. This is what we use to escape Alcatraz. <laughs> it's a shrine. 
came off of the bus of Salinas. Yeah, Salinas. I'm here at my grand wall. <laughs> <laughs> FBI agents surmised early on that the men had drowned. Mm, of course they did. FBI was like, I'm not investigating this right. shit. They decided that the fact uh, the individual's personal effects were the only belongings they had and the men who have drowned before leaving behind. It was a wallet. A wallet. I don't think anybody's r- r- uh, being risked to drown for a wallet. However, however, no human remains were ever, ever found at that time. At that time. <laughs> at that time, ever. <laughs> they were never, ever found at that time. <laughs> uh, not their human remains. Herman, 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 Herman remains. remains. Not those ones, anyways. Right. Right. 17 July, a month after the escape, a Norwegian ship, SS Norfjell. 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 Spotted a body floating in the ocean, 15 nautical miles, 17 miles from the Golden Gate Bridge. The ship did not retrieve the body and did not report the sighting until October. Mm, that ship was up to no good. Body just floating in the water. How do you not report it? Right. They took, what, July, August, September, after three months to even report it? Three months. Maybe they didn't report it until they got back. Right. Does it take that three? Wait. Our Norwegian ship, and they're in the Pacific. Oh, so why they, the hell is a Norwegian ship in California? So they probably had to go all <laughs> the way around to get back to Norway. Right. Mm, yeah, I mean, I guess. Or unless they go up. because they, Yeah, because they go up. Go around that way. They go up and uh, um, go around. What is that? Russia. Called up there. Go around Russia. What is that called? What is that area up there called? The ocean. No. Obviously, the Antarctic is down there. Is it the Arctic? Arctic. The Arctic Ocean, right? So these guys didn't say nothing until October. Yeah, either way. <laughs> floating. In, they say the Arctic. They say the Arctic, though. So good for them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Francisco <laughs> County Coroner Henry Turkle cast doubt on speculation that it could have been one of the escapees, emphasizing the improbability. Improbability that a body would still be floating on the surface of the ocean after more than a month. Right. Instead, he proposed that the corpse may have been that of Cecil Philip Herman, a 34-year-old unemployed baker who had jumped from the Golden Gate, Bri- Golden Gate Bridge five years, <laughs> five days. <Whoa. laughs> He's like, no way could they uh, be a month, but surely five years <laughs> five again. Years. Uh, yeah, why not? <laughs> five days earlier. Uh, several coroners from neighboring counties alleged Turkle's opinion or challenged Turkle's opinion, not alleged it, <laughs> alleged it was fake. Uh, stated in that it was possible the remains belonged to one of the escapees. Of course, it's possible. Slim. Anybody can say it's possible. Slim to none. Right. Like, it's like the chances of dying from COVID. <laughs> Not gonna I mean, it's possible. Right. FBI investigators announced their official position. That- and that's the sign of that's the sound of the feed getting cut off right. because it got pulled from all co- uh, right. podcast providers. Right. FBI investigators announced their official position that while it was theoretically possible for the men to have reached Angel Island, the odds of their having survived the turbulent currents and the frigid waters of the bay were negligible. According to the final FBI report, West said that he had planned to steal clothes and a car upon reaching land. But no such thefts were reported in the immediate Oh, area. but were there? Hmm. 